fourth Republican primary debate did go ahead this week, and Vivek Ramaswamy came out swinging against Chris Christie and Nikki Haley over their so-called foreign policy experience. They're both warmongers, we know this. Um, do you think Ramaswamy was impactful enough to put himself back in this race? Because I'm inclined to think a lot of Americans nowadays might agree with him on a sort of less trigger-happy warmongering stance. Well, I think that's an, an interesting question. It's an insightful question. And it's really a layered question because uh, there's the question of did Vivek Ramaswamy have a standout performance at this debate? He certainly did. And I think there's certainly many people in the American public that are going to gravitate towards the things that he said. Obviously, many of the statements that he made, not just on the issue of foreign policy, where he is so independent, really, of the uh, the Chris Christie's and the Nikki Haley's and the Ron DeSantis's, this more, uh, more I, I guess I would say, traditionalist GOP model versus a, a more brash, uh, younger, but also in a sense, classical model yeah. of of GOP realism, of of understanding that um, rather than seeking, as we said before, this global hegemony, uh, that the United States could be a great power, could be interested in balance of power politics, and understanding its role in the world as well as in, within the Western Hemisphere should be the primary focus. Uh, this is something, by the way, that Donald Trump has obviously also spoken about many, many times. Mm. And that predominantly the U.S.'s role in other parts of the world should be focused more on trade and diplomacy. That being said, um, there's also you know the angle of why are Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis staying in this race when none of them really have any of these these polling numbers that are breaking out? Uh, it's because they're propped up by donors, whereas Vivek, of course, is propped up by himself. So he's yeah. going for those small dollar donors in many cases. He's building out a wide popular base. But Nikki Haley's donors, by the way, mm. they don't care. They don't care what she said. They don't care how bad she looked when she couldn't answer that question about the three Ukrainian provinces um, that they were focused on. She didn't really even give any solid foreign policy examples, mm. what, none whatsoever, other than these, these sort of blatant, very glib, by the way, very glib answers about, oh, the United States must stand for resolve. Well, what is resolve? How do you measure resolve? Mm. You know, these, these, these various, you know, nebulous abstract concepts. Whereas Vivek Ramaswamy, you know, obviously is, is very well read on, on a variety of subjects, has looked into these things and has come, come back with complex answers to them and pragmatic answers, as opposed to sort of your, your classical rhetoric of the United States must uh, invade and, and intervene where, wherever, wherever spread it must be. Spread democracy around the world. As far as being able to break out, yeah, spread democracy, right? Mm. As far as being able to break out into the, into the primary though, um, I think quite frankly, that Donald Trump's um, pervasive, not only name ID, but his fight, his struggle, his just uh, really cinematic, I would say cinematic struggle now against the, so many forces in the United States and abroad, these globalist forces that he is up against, whether you're looking at him in the courtroom, whether you're seeing him on uh, in a town hall saying that he'd, uh, you know, he'd, he wouldn't want to be a dictator, except maybe mm. for one day. It, it's creating <laughs> this sort of very, it, he's using that imagery, he's using those theatrics, he's creating a setup that I think Americans who are so inclined to think in terms of movies are going to want to see through. And there's this general sense as well that Donald Trump has unfinished business from his original term. Uh, he was prevented from having a second term. We are mm. currently in an interregnum. And, and then more, more concretely, that the current crop of issues that are facing the United States, that are facing the West, when you look in terms of us being on the brink of World War III, mm. you need someone who has a capricious record as a peacemaker to come into power. Donald Trump was that in spades. And all he has to do is really say things were better under me than they are under Joe Biden. That's going to be a huge winning record for so many Americans. Now, um, does that mean that Vivek doesn't have a place either in a cabinet or some future position? We'll see. Um, there's there's been a sort of shadow campaign to uh, to see if Vivek would be interested in running for Senate. By the way, so he's in the oh, wow. in the state of Ohio. 
uh, which is the same state that uh, J.D. Vance just became a senator in last cycle. Mm. And there is currently an open Senate race in the coming up this year or coming up in 2024, I should say. And so there's been some talk about would he switch over because since they're both federal races, the, his campaign would essentially be able to switch over. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen at this point, though. Mm. Uh, it seems like whatever he's destined for will probably have some kind of national um, national prevalence. And um, yeah, I don't quite know what that is personally. Mm. I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know if Vivek himself knows, but I do think that we are going to be hearing a lot more, whatever it is, we're yeah. going to be hearing a lot more from him, not only in the next couple of years, uh, if Trump wins again, which I think he will, um, certainly he'll, Vivek will have a role to play in that movement.